Good morning. Looks like it's just you and me, Ronald. Good morning. Okay, so we're going to continue with the sample test here. So we were on number 10, which is about figuring out what reaction we're talking about when looking for a specific either KB or KA. In this case, you can see that we're looking for KB. Now, when we're doing these kinds of equations, I actually give you the fact that water is added, so that is helpful, actually. Let me move the screen here a little bit. We know that for KB, where the B is for base, and that means that we're going to form OH minus as a product. So we get OH minus. Now where the OH minus come from? Well, it came from the water. And you can imagine the water as being a combination of H plus and OH minus. So We've already accounted for the OH minus. Really what we're trying to do here is take the H plus and add it to the other side here. And if I do that, then I would get PHSH. You don't have to know what pH is, it's phenyl, but that's not really important. All that matters is you would add H plus to whatever you have on the other side. So that would be for the KB. Now this specific one is asking about Ka. So Ka is about acid. Now we're told here that we're adding water. So I know that one of the things I'm expecting if we're talking about acid would not be H plus, but H3O plus because we have water in the, in the mix here. And for this one, the product would be PHO minus. And what we're doing there is to get the H3O plus, what we did was we added H plus to be H2O, which means all I do is I take H plus away from this one. So hopefully you can see the, see the pattern here. In this instance, we're adding H plus for the KB. And in the KA, we're taking the H plus away, which I think makes a, makes a lot of sense. All right, does anybody have any questions about 10 and 11? Okay. All right, question 12. 
we're getting into a different question now on the on the test. <coughs> so what we're looking here, looking for here is the pH of a weak acid. We're given the we're given the molarity and the Ka. So it's HA, and I know for HA, if we're talking about Ka here, see you see the Ka. That's going to be H plus plus A minus. I'll do it the other way around. Make it a little bit more consistent with what I've got in the notes. So A minus plus H plus, but it doesn't really matter which way you do that. So we set this up the same way as we've been setting up all these other problems. So we have the initial molarity, we'll have the equilibrium molarity. We've got 2.09 the initial zero and zero for the A minus and the H plus. And then after a certain time, it'll be 2.09 minus Z and A minus will become Z and H plus will become Z. Now, obviously I'm just looking for an answer here, so you don't have to show all the work, but I'm going to go through and show the whole thing here. So we make this assumption that since since the Ka is low, it's less than 10 to the negative four, then it's worth trying to make this assumption. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume this because it's a weak acid. We're going to assume it's a weak acid because the Ka is low. That's how I'm getting away with that. And if I assume it's a weak acid, then what I'm saying is 2.09 minus Z is approximating out to 2.09. That's all I'm that's all I'm saying. So Z is so small relative to the concentration that it may as well not matter, is, is what it's is what that is basically saying. Now we do have a Ka expression we can write here. Products over reactants. Now, obviously I'm expecting that people won't write all this stuff out as work. They'll probably just do the math needed to get the answer. But, you know, I, 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 see, I see limited value in that. I think it's better to write it all out, but uh, you know, that's just me. 2.12 times 10 to the negative five is equal to Z squared. Then since we make that assumption over 2.09 and Z squared then, sorry, Z will equal, I'll go ahead and just find Z. I get point uh, zero zero six six six. So that's Z, which, as you can see up here in the table, represents the equilibrium concentration of all of these different things. We've got Z and Z for A minus and then 2.09 minus Z would be for the HA. So that happens to equal the concentration of H plus. So the pH, which will be the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration would be Two point one seven seven. And you know, this is three sig figs. So that means we get three decimal places on the log here. All right, does anybody have any questions?
about finding the pH in that situation. Now there is another step that we can do for that as well, and that would be to, to validate the assumption, but I'm not going to worry about that because there's a question that relates to that coming up. So I'll, I'll leave that be for this one. Okay, number 13, it says calculate the percentage, and this is the question I'm talking about. Calculate the percentage that allows for the del deliberation of whether or not 0.29 minus H plus is approximately two point, sorry, 0.29 in accordance with the 5% rule. So for that, what you're actually going to have to do is figure out the, the concentration of H plus, just as we did previously. So I'll, uh, I'm going to shortcut this one since I've already shown you how you would do it fully out. And we're given the Ka there, 7.30 times 10 to the negative two. So that's looking like it's going to be a pretty big number for Z. So Z, which again equals the concentration of H plus here. Then I get 0.14 or 0.15. Is it? 7.30 times 10 to the negative 5 or 10 to the negative 2? I'm looking at number 13 here. Yeah. Did you write 10 to the negative 5 on oh, your... Oh, I did. I'm sorry. I, mean... <laughs> I was sorry. confused. Sorry. I've been, writing, been used to writing that. Sorry. It's, uh, I did do the right calculation, though. The, okay. the H plus came out to be 0.15. Yeah, I had um, gotten that, too. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. So the, to, to, sorry. Is there another question? All right, so we made this assumption initially. We assumed that 0.29 minus H plus is approximating out to 0.29, which is, which is fine. But then what we do is we, we want to figure out if uh, the, I'll just do the whole thing here. So what we do is to get a percentage, and it's going to be the concentration of H plus divided by the concentration of HA initial. So what it was at the very beginning. So what we're doing here is we're taking 0.15 and dividing it by 0.29, multiplying by 100%. Mm. Well, this one's going to be pretty, a bit more than, and I, I get 50, 50%, near enough to it. So that would definitely be more than 5%. So you wouldn't be able to use the, use the assumption for this specific example, but that's not what it's after. It's just after the, the, the percentage. I said, I guess it said to do it to two decimal places. So I guess I should follow those directions and make it 50.17. All right, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have a question for how we calculated Z equals H plus, which equals 0.15 M. Mm. Just because we did 7.30 X10 to the negative two times 0 0.9 and squared it. 0 0.29, 0.29. Okay. And then I found the square root. Okay, I'm just checking. Okay. Now, see what we're doing here is remember that this is the assumption that we're making. And we're trying to say 
this, the assumption was that 0 0.2 min, 0.29 minus H plus is approximating out to 0.29. Now that's not going to happen if H plus is a very large number. And you can see that here, if we make H plus 0.15, there's no way that you can say 0.29 minus 0.15 is going to approximate out to 0.29. And you can see that's reflected in the percentage here, which is 50.17%. Now, to, if it's less than 5%, then you're saying, but then that's an, a valid assumption to make. But here, the assumption would be completely invalid. Right. Does, it, does anybody have any questions? Number 14. Okay, so we've figured out that the concentration of H plus was 0 0.00564 in an initially 0.749 molar solution of HA. What's the new HA with the correct number of significant figures? Now this one I'll do, I'll do that partially because I think it's helpful. So again, we've got our reaction, HA gives H plus plus A minus. You know, the in initial molar molarity and then the equilibrium molarity is what we have down here. And then we've got 0.749 molar as being the initial and zero and zero. And then at equilibrium, it's going to be 0.749 minus Z, Z and Z. We're actually told here what the concentration of H plus is, and the concentration of H plus is 0 0.00564 molar. We're not given any other information because we don't really need it. And that actually happens, that actually happens to equal Z. Because remember that the equilibrium H plus is Z in accordance with the table. But that also means that the concentration of HA at equilibrium is going to be 0.749 minus C. And Z is what we just said, 0 0.00. Five, six, four. Now this is asking for the correct answer with significant figures. And I get here 0.743. And of course we're using of course, we're using the decimal places here. So that's three places past the decimal, that's five. The answer comes out to three. Any questions? Excuse me, about number 14. Okay. So the, uh, the last, Last question here is asking, and this is, let's say last question, last question for this specific question on the test. Given that H plus from HA is 0 0.00409 and we're told that H plus for H2O is 4.5 times 10 to the negative seven, does the H plus from water need to be considered in the calculation and why? Now, if you remember what I had said about this, in a solution of HA in H2O, Of course, all these things will be in, in water anyway. The total H plus is going to equal the H plus from HA plus the H plus from the water. So 
So that's what you've got to understand, the H plus from the HA plus the H plus from the water. Now, whether the H plus from the water matters or not is going to depend on its size relative to the H plus from the HA. So what I'm saying is if the H plus from the water is very small relative to the H plus from the HA, then it ain't gonna matter. But if it's around the same size as the HA, then it is going to matter. Around, around the same size or even, uh, or even possibly larger than the, the HA, then it certainly will matter then. So at this point, it really becomes more like a significant figure exercise. So we're told here that the H plus from the HA is 0 0.00409. And the H plus from the water is 4.5 times 10 to the negative seven, which I'll write out as a decimal here. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, five. And what I would want you to see here is that if we follow significant figure rules, we have uh, five decimal places here. And here we have well, eight, I guess. And you can see that if I put that into my calculator, it's still going to come out to be 0 0.00409. So what's the bottom line there about whether the water needs to be considered or not? The answer is no, it doesn't. So only if the water is of, the H plus from the water is of similar size or even greater than the H plus from the acid, that's the only time you need to consider it. Does anybody have any questions about number 15? So at that point, then we move on to the buffers. Now for this one, uh, we're interested in moles of AH, but there's for 16 and 17, there are a number of possibilities here. We can do moles of AH, in after acids been added, we can do moles of AH after base has been added, we can do moles of A minus after acids been added, we can do moles of A minus after base has been added. So any any of those combinations are possible for 16 and 17. And I do have worked examples in the videos for these as well, all of them, all the possibilities. All right, so with this one, I think it's good to, to draw a little picture of what's going on. So we're told that we have a buffer and it's made up of 0.844 molar AH. and also A minus here, 0.877 molar. And what are we doing to it? Well, we're adding HCl, so we're adding H plus. So I like to, I like to draw a picture so that we know exactly what we're doing here. So now we can get an idea of what's going to happen the H plus isn't going to interact with the AH, it will interact with the A minus. And it will do so in this manner, the A minus will react with the H plus and turn into AH. So what are we looking for here? Well, we're looking for the moles of AH present. So the moles of AH present after the acid has been added will and I'll say that after H plus. Reaction. Will be the initial moles. Of AH. Plus the moles of H plus added. Now the reason for that. And it's plus because we know that the A minus is turning into H plus, but how much AH are we actually going to get in addition to what we originally had? Well, it's going to depend on how much H plus we added. So for every mole of H plus we add, we get one extra mole of AH. And that's what I want you to understand. 
but the key there is the plus in the middle here. Does anybody have any questions? To get the initial moles of AH, yeah, I don't really feel like it's worth doing a doing a picture here. I don't know. I don't think you can memorize this. I mean, you can try, I suppose, but. Let's see, uh, so it'd be 0 0.844. Moles per litre times the number of litres, which is three, 390.4. So it'd be times 0 0.390.4 litres. Oh, sorry, 0 0.3904 litres. And that'll give me the moles of AH here. which is 0.329 moles. So that's the number of moles of AH that are initially in the solution. We need to get the moles of H plus that we're adding here as well. So moles of H plus added, which would be 0.544 moles per litre times 0 0.01363. And I get uh, 0 0.00741 moles. So the last, last thing you'd have to do there is add those two things together. That'll give you that'll give you your answer because we have to do add here. So we take those two numbers, we add them together, and that'll give us our final answer. Does anybody have any questions? It'd be 0 0.336, I think, would be the final answer there. Moles. All right, any, any other questions about that one? Could we do um, three significant figures for the answer? Well, it's, it's really three places past the decimal for the answer because you're adding those two things together. Okay. That's why I'm saying it's 0.336. Yeah, yeah, is it three sig figs? Yes, but not because of sig figs. It's sig figs because of the, the decimal places as we're adding. All right, uh, the next one, as I said, it's uh, 16 and 17 can be two of four possibilities. This one is we're adding sodium hydroxide and we're looking for A minus here. All right, so again, I still feel like it's useful to come up with a picture what we have here. So we'll have the AH, we'll have the A minus. AH is 0.796 molar. The A minus is 0.788. And what are we doing? We're adding OH minus. So the OH minus isn't going to interact with the A minus, it's going to interact with the AH. So the AH is going to react with the OH minus and turn into A minus plus water. So we can see that the A minus is going to go up. And again, it's going to go up by the amount of OH minus that we add. So the A minus after reaction with OH minus will be the initial moles of A minus plus the moles of OH minus added.
And at that point, we just do exactly the same thing as what we did last time. But the key here is figuring out whether you're going to have a plus or a minus at this point. And you need to be able to understand that. See, had you been after the moles of AH, then this would have been a minus. That's what I want you to understand. That's why it's important. It just so happens that both of these, you have to add them, but it could be subtraction as well. Does anybody have any questions about number 17? So that'd be my advice for 16 or 17. I don't know if anybody's gonna take it. In fact, I don't think anybody's gonna take my advice to be honest about drawing a picture and figuring out what's going on. I think most people are just gonna try and memorize what they need to do, which I think is unfortunate, but there's uh, nothing I can do about that. I can't make you want to understand it. All right, uh, number 17, which table best represents the situation when calculating the pH of a buffer after addition of a small amount of NaOH, where X and Y are the concentrations of AH and A minus directly after reaction. So what we're talking about here is what's happened after this step. And the reality is for this kind of question, the whether you're adding NaOH or HCl doesn't matter. You're always going to end up with the same table. And it's just going to be reflective of what ha what's happening to the AH at equilibrium. So the AH at equilibrium is turning into A minus and H plus. And that means that the AH is going to be going down and the A minus is going to be going up and the H plus is going to be going up as well. So you need to find a table that reflects that and it's all, it's not going to matter whether you added HCl or NaOH at this point, because during the course of the reaction, whatever gets added is gone anyway. And all we're left with is just AH and A minus at the end. All right, does anybody have any questions? So question 19 is where we put all of this stuff together and we try to figure out the pH, well, what are we looking for here? Yeah, the pH of the buffer after we've added a certain amount of, in this case, base but we could be adding acid as well. That's the other possibility for this problem. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of steps to this one. Again, I feel like a lot of people just try and memorize what they need to do. I mean, judging by the fact there's only six people here today, or well, five people really, six including me, I can see that there seems to be a bit of disinterest in, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just being, I'll, I'll scrub that, I'm sorry. I'm just being a little bit uh, negative right now and I'm sorry about that. So a buffer is made up of equal volumes of 402.8 mils of AH and A minus. So we've got our AH we've got our A minus, and then we're going to put them together to form our buffer. And as you can see, that's going to increase the volume of the solution, which changes the concentrations of AH and A minus that we had there initially. In addition to that, it looks like we're adding sodium hydroxide. So OH minus gets added into the, into the mix here, and we have to take account of that. So the way that we do this, we handle this in a few steps. We do the initial concentrations first. And to get the moles of AH being initial, I'll, I'll write initial here. So I wanna be real clear that it is the initial. So the initial concentration of AH, so that's, what it is in this beaker here is going to be 
0.770 moles per litre times 0 0.4028 litres. And that would be point three one zero moles. The reason we have to convert to moles is because we're changing the concentration. The moles aren't changing until we do a reaction, but uh, we can we know that if there's point three one zero moles in the initial solution even once it gets diluted with the other portion of the buffer, it's still going to be 0 0.310 moles. So the initial A minus then we do the same thing. And let's see, 0 0.7, sorry, 0 0.834 moles per litre times again, 0 0.4028 liters and I get point three three six And the concentration of OH minus added, not, not I shouldn't say concentration, be moles of OH minus added, I should say. And that's going to be, let's see, 10 points, 1.154. Times ten point two nine mils. Point zero one zero two nine liters. And I get point zero zero one five eight. Okay, I'm going to open another I'm going to open another instance of this window here. Sorry. Sorry, there we go. Okay. So after reaction, What we know is that since we're adding OH minus, that we can get the moles of AH and we get to get the moles of A minus. The moles of AH are going to equal the initial moles of AH minus the moles of OH minus added because the OH minus will react with the OH with the AH, the RH minus will react with the AH. And for the A minus, the initial moles of A minus plus the moles of OH minus. Again, the same reason. So the AH goes down and the A minus ends up going up. 
And you can, you can get an impression here of why it's important for us to, to understand what's going on rather than just try to memorize the mechanics because there's just too much here to memorize in my opinion. So for the 0.336 minus 0.0158, I get 0.32, Point three. So it's 0 0.310 minus 0 0.00158. And I get 0 0.308 moles for the AH and for the A minus 0.336 plus 0 0.00158, we get 0.338. And then after that, we can get our concentrations of A, H and A minus, and concentrations are going to then be based upon the moles divided by the total volume of solution. And the total volume of solution here is going to be, it's going to be the equal volumes of the buffer, 402.8, multiplied by two plus the 10.29 mils of sodium hydroxide that were added. Sorry. write that up here. The total volume point four oh two eight. Well no, we'll just do we'll do it in do it in milliliters for now. Let me check that and make sure. Yeah. So it'd be eight fifteen point nine mils or point eight one five nine liters. And the same thing for the, the A minus. And that would be 0.377 moles per liter. And the other one. Point four one four moles per liter. So those would be the concentrations at equilibrium. Then we can apply our, our table to that. And our table is going to consist of what happens after the reaction where the AH is going to end up splitting, at least some of it is, into A minus and H plus. So the initial concentration of AH is what we have 
just calculated 0.377. The initial concentration of A minus is 0.414. And we're assuming at this point, we don't have any H plus in the solution. But after it's reached equilibrium, the AH goes down by a little bit. The A minus goes up by a little bit. And the H plus also goes up by that same amount Z. And whether or not we've added sodium hydroxide or HCl, these signs don't change. That doesn't matter. Because this is a weak acid, and we know that because it is a buffer, we don't even have to validate this. We know that 0.377 minus Z is approximating out to 0.377. We know that 0.414 plus Z is approximating out to 0.414. And then we can go ahead and do our calculation to figure out our H plus. So we know that Ka A minus times H plus over AH. We're given the Ka A in the question and it's 6.130 times 10 to the negative 5. And that's equal to point C A minus point four one four times Z over point three seven seven. So then we can calculate Z, which happens to equal the concentration of H plus. I get 5.58 times 10 to the negative 5. And the pH of that, take the negative log, I get 4.253 as being the pH. And that would be the that'd be the final answer. Uh, it's a long road to get there, and I think you really have to understand what you're doing in order to be successful with this problem. But uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what has to be done. Does anybody have any questions about this one? Yes, I have a question about um, when we're talking about after the reaction mm -hmm. uh, being negative and then positive. So I know that. AH has to go down and A plus has to go up. A minus has to go up. A minus has to go up. Yeah. So the AH goes down, the A minus goes up. A if, minus we're, goes down. if we're adding OH minus. Okay. Because the OH minus reacts with the AH. And that's right. And the, that means it sends the AH down and sends the A minus up. The reverse is true okay. when you add H plus. Okay. So if you add H plus, then it would just switch? Uh, yes, that's right. Yes, that's true. They, they can't both be the same sign. You can't be at both adding both or subtracting both. That's definitely impossible. But you do have to know which one you're doing at the time. All right, any other questions about this one? All right, so this one, uh, we're looking at how ions break up in solution. And 
my recommendation is to draw pictures out for these. So this one's SBBR5. So it'd be an SB with five BRs on it. You'd need to know that BR had a negative one charge. And that would mean that SB would have to have a five plus charge to match. So the answer would be SB five plus plus five BR minuses would be how it would break apart. Any questions about number 20? Okay, 21, this is a good example as well, CRCN3. And I do give you the charges on polyatomic ions and you can see that CN has a negative one charge, which makes CR3 plus. So the answer would be CR3 plus plus three CN minus. Next one, we got CR, 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 and then PO3, and then PO3. We know that PO3 has a negative three charge. That means that each of these would have to be two plus. So the answer would be three CR2 plus, plus two PO3, three minus. Does anybody have any questions so far? And uh, yeah, SN3 and 4 would be done the same way. I'm not going to do that one as well. All right, so we're told here that a slightly soluble salt has the formula A2B5. We're given the KSP. We're looking for PB. That's not lead. That is the negative, that's the negative log of the concentration of B. That's what PB means there. How would you know that? Well, you can always look at the video. I have a video here that describes how to do this as well. So when we look at A2B5 and how it would break apart in solution, it would be A5 plus, now the charges here really don't matter. So how many? Two, two A5 pluses and then five B, two minuses. Here I just picked up the charges based on the based on the subscripts, but you know that would work out here. You've got two times five is ten, five times negative two is negative ten. So you see it does balance. But what I'm really interested in here is that five. That's that's uh, really the key here to the problem. So initially we have uh, we, we don't have this a concentration for the solid, of course. And the ions haven't formed yet, but at equilibrium, again, the solid won't matter, but the concentrations will be 2Z and 5Z. So it's going to break apart, but you're going to get 5Z five, five for every 5B2 minuses for every 2A5 pluses. So it goes 2Z and 5Z there. And then we can look at our KSP expression, which is the concentration of A5 plus squared and B2 minus to the fifth. The KSP value is 2.6 times 10 to the negative 23. And then we can substitute in our our values here, 2z squared and 5z to the fifth. And then we can start solving for it. I'll go ahead and write this out. 2.6 times 10 to the negative 23 equals 4z squared. And then 5z to the fifth, Let's see what 5 to the fifth is. 3125. And then I continue with that, it's 2.6 times 10 to the negative 23 is equal to six times four, 12,500. And 
z to the seventh. And I can solve for z then. And that would be taking the seventh root. So to the power of one divided by seven. And I get point, uh, I get point zero, 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 one, five. Once I solve for Z. And then uh, I can I can get the, the concentration of B minus from that. So the concentration of B minus is equal to five Z. And that's uh, 7.71 or 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 4. So PB would be the negative log of that. And that would be 3.11. And that would be the answer. Does anybody have any questions? Maybe you have any questions? For, for PB, we just took the negative log of 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative four. Yeah, it's a negative log of the concentration of B minus. That's why A is not involved. If I'd asked for PA, then you would have taken the negative log of the A5 plus concentration. Okay. All right, any other questions about that one? Well, the rest of it we did the other day, so I'm not, not inclined to, to do another one of those. If you want another example, you can always watch the video of that as well, but I, I'm not going to, to go through that one again because I just did it like, uh, well, Thursday. So if you want, you can go back and look at that video, but I'm not doing that one again. Does anybody have any other questions about the test? Not right now. All right. Does uh, nobody has anything else they want to ask about here? No, uh, I'm pretty good. All right. Okay. I don't know if anybody's done the test yet, but it has to be done by by Thursday. All the extra credit and everything closes Wednesday at eleven fifty nine p.m. The test has to be done by Thursday. It doesn't have to be done on Thursday. I would recommend doing it early, just in case you have any technical issues and you don't want to be left in trouble at the last minute trying to get something solved, which could have been solved earlier. So uh, I'd recommend getting it done early. All right, any questions? All right. Well, we'll leave it there then, and I will uh, talk to you. Talk to you when you have any hassles or have any issues. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.